All right, we're back here. Hopefully uh, we're in frame. <laughs> All right, Saturday morning. Thanks for coming around, tuning in and everything. So, all right, we got some comments here. Hopefully your Saturday morning is going good. And this, uh, for some of you, I guess is kind of an early morning. Uh, we do kind of post the show, uh, try to get the show up and going fairly early for everybody so that uh, wherever time uh, zones you're at, uh, you can catch it. And uh, as of course, you know, and, um, I don't know where about where everybody else is, but uh, out here actually we're heading into kind of a, what appears to be an early uh, spring. So um, you know what? Uh, actually for once, I got to tell you this, this is strange. I know this is going to be weird coming from me. I'm actually looking forward to a little bit of the warmer weather because I tell you, my my leg and my uh, sciatic nerve uh, issues have been killing me lately. Uh, and I I do think it's uh, the, the cold weather has um, brought that on because it definitely has been uh, quite a, a strain uh, lately. So I'm going to kind of looking forward to the warmer weather to hopefully uh, ease the pain. Uh, <laughs> so fingers crossed on that one. But anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and read your comments here. Uh, if your comment wasn't read, like I said, uh, you probably commented after the fact that we done the show, the, the recording of the show, uh, or for some reason it got held or whatnot. Um, also, you know, like uh, I, it was kind of touched on by uh, somebody else here that, that had mentioned it, and it is a very um, a good point, and we'll touch on that a little bit. All right, uh, first up, Crazy Scotsman. Old school movies have driven so many purchases and wants. Um, still a bunch on the list, yet another year, uh, another year uh, since we lost our dear, our dear friend, Mr. Holster. Uh, one of the greats, we hope that uh, you continue at least these videos, collector show, radio show, uh, is a staple for many of us. I do appreciate that, and um, I do realize that it is, uh, for a lot of you tuning in here on a Saturday morning, it has become such a, you know, in, I guess, uh, you know, part of your routine, and I do greatly appreciate it. It's actually the only reason we keep doing it, um, honestly, uh, so it's no longer really about views or um, anything like that. Um, the channel has certainly uh, dropped off uh, a, a great deal. Um, but I kept this going because of the pretty much the, the, the small niche of people that we got that enjoy doing, uh, tuning in and uh, commenting and everything like that. Um, this is for you. Um, we, that's why we continue doing it. And uh, it is fun, and we get to. And it also, what I really like about the doing this format, I guess, and breaking away from what the kind of, in a sense, I guess you could say, we broke away from what the channel originally was or uh, was doing. And kind of quit all that. Um, it gives me freedom to really just do whatever. Um, it doesn't see. It doesn't have to be a certain. Uh, you know, we don't, we're not bound, we're, I don't feel bound to like, you know, you can only do this or you can only talk about this or show this and uh, it gives a chance to really just do all kinds of different stuff, share with you some things that you may or may not know um, about me or whatnot uh, going through the years and, uh, you know, as we approach 10 years of the, of this um, channel being up and, and going, you know, it just allows a different type of thing to take place. So, all right. Mike says here, uh, I enjoyed the show. Yes, uh, it is so sad we are losing so many iconic actors and artists from our time. One of my favorite movie uh, gun films is Paul Newman's Ombre. Uh, the short uh, magazine Winchester 73 is awesome. The final uh, gunfight scene is probably the most real for, for a movie of its time, not topped... Uh, for probable uh, probable realism until um, Private Ryan, uh, best wishes from Montana and, and Mike there. Yeah, um, I mean Saving Private Ryan. I'm not much into the war movies per se. I don't really uh, go off on them. I don't. I certainly don't watch a lot of the. Uh, I guess if I do watch war movies, they're based on older past wars. 
uh, you know, World War II, Vietnam, etc. Um, you know, some of the ones I like, I guess you could say. Saving Private Ryan definitely is a amazing film. Um, I did like the spin-offs that they did, uh, the Pacific and the Band of Brothers. I liked the Pacific a little bit better. Um, but uh, yeah, as uh, far as even Vietnam films, I, I do there's a select few of the, those I like. I remember watching a lot of Tour of Duty when that was a TV show going on. So anyway, but uh, yeah, not a whole lot uh, in that area of you know stuff, but really cool movies. It's funny you mentioned because last week we were talking about like you know what was my favorite like gun combination movie it was talking about magnum force you know and you know doing a lot of praising for uh, john milius and stuff like that and all that but i i will you know come to think of it um as as throughout the week as past I, I said you know what there was one thing that i gotta say that that was really really silly about that movie was come on the guy putting a, a silencer uh, on his cult python <laughs> I mean, anybody that knows uh, anything about um, that, you know, firearms or whatnot, knows that that, that is just completely ridiculous. It's not going to work. <laughs> you could put the thing on, and he doesn't even, like, screw it on or attach it. It just kind of shoves onto the barrel. And I think he kind of fakes and makes it look like he twists it or something like that. But... I mean, if you know what, if you know that revolver and you know that that whole thing, that that's just not possible. <laughs> anyway, all right, Slim Fire. Good morning, JW, and I have to agree with you on the Dirty Harry movie. It's classic. Uh, I'm glad you don't talk uh, politics. We get enough every day. Have a great week. Thanks, Slim. And there, that was the comment I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, if you're going to make political stuff here on the channel, on the comments, I'm not going to read them. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I just don't. Uh, again, this was a very well put comment um, right here. Um, I don't talk politics on this channel. Never have and never will. Um, from day one, I decided that was not something I wanted to do. As he said, we get enough of it on an everyday basis. There are channels that have completely made their entire uh, thing about that and I don't um, same reason why early on in the channel in the early days and stuff this is the reason we started it doing it was uh, we wanted to show a lot of stuff that I felt wasn't being showed uh, as predominant as say the other stuff you know um, any all the all polymer wonder film uh, pistols and stuff and you know ARs and stuff um, great you know nothing wrong with that stuff not my cup of tea but I kind of always preferred, you know, older stuff, um, especially like 1911s and, and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of wanted to kind of show a little bit more on that stuff. But anyway, I do appreciate that, Slim. Thank you very much. All right. Um, this one comes from, hey, my fr my friends over there, Beretta, 9mm USA. Another fantastic radio show, my fellow lefty. Still going, I'm still shooting left-handed. Uh, Michael Ironside is our Sam Fisher. Uh, though, love those old Splinter Cell games. Uh, William Sadler is terrific in Power, later season. I don't think I recall seeing that. I don't think I saw that. Uh, it's a TV show on Stars and Hulu. Highly recommend checking it out uh, if you haven't seen it. Some of the best uh, um, gun scenes on TV. Hey. That sounds pretty cool. Who, who, anybody else seen that? Um, Power. I guess it's a television series, um, which, I, again, I don't watch too many of those things. I don't have stars of Hulu. I, I stick with Amazon Prime, and um, that's about it for streaming stuff. I don't stream a whole lot uh, because I'm, I'm, I guess, call me old school. I'm still a physical media person. In fact, that's what this week's episode is a lot about. Uh, again, right. Keep up the great work. Uh, bad Jack. Uh, see you next week, brother. Young Beretta there again. Thank you guys. I do appreciate it. And you know, you guys have a phenomenal channel that, um, I feel really sets the bar pretty high 
and I think anybody that is interested in seeing really cool um, stuff, especially 1911s, and wants to see it done right and see a video that covers all bases and uh, has just a really good wholesome feel to it and excellent uh, range footage, highly recommend Beretta 9mm USH channel. And don't forget about their other stuff, CC 9mm, um, and they're, uh, I think their guys are still doing the Legion of Tools as well. So... All right, so Philly uh, Beretta, Steven Seagal does a really good job with the 1911, especially uh, in Marked for Death. Uh, check out James Conn and Thief. That is an excellent movie. I do. It's one of my favorites. I own a uh, copy of that movie that's a, a Criterion uh, copy. If you guys are loving social... Um, Physical media, not social media. I don't do social media. This is about as far as I go with that. Um, physical media. Uh, Criterion is a company that does a lot of certain uh, Blu-ray editions and stuff like that of their um, really cool films that uh, some are really well known, some are not so well known, but uh, Thief is one of them, and that is on there, and I highly recommend getting that. Uh, that is, to me... Uh, probably one of James Caan's best films, I think. And it, of course, is directed by the man himself. As you actually talk about it here, great with 1911, um, with the 1911 best ending taught by Michael Mann's SAS uh, tech guy, Thel Reed, and Jeff Cooper turned it down because uh, Caan was playing a bad guy, Who, Dare Win, Who Dares Wins. Um, yeah, that is true. That is what I read too. That he uh, they sent uh, James Conn up to Gunsight, uh, and apparently, yeah, Jeff Cooper didn't want to train him because Jeff Cooper was like, "No, he's a bad guy. I don't want. I mean, a bad guy would." I think of the the quote. I'm kind of just loosely uh, quoting it that he said something like, "It was like a bad guy wouldn't have that kind of training or something." So, um, who dares wins? Um, if, I think you're talking about. Uh, that's another really cool movie that kind of flies under the radar. Um, that's also known as The Final Option. Uh, speaking of Criterion and all that, um, that was another uh, movie that got re-released uh, from KL Studios. So I do have a copy of that. Uh, thanks to a buddy of mine that actually uh, turned me on to that movie. That's a really cool movie, especially if you like High Powers. Um, that, that's a great one. Art, Wine, and Anarchy, Michael Ironside equals the poor man's Jack Nicholson. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I think we've all thought of that in one form or another. <laughs> that, you know, thinking about that. It's like, you know, he's kind of like a, <laughs> a budget Jack Nicholson. And that is funny. I, always, I thought I was like kind of, you know... I always used to think things like that. You get certain actors like that. Um, you know, it's funny too, if you think about this. Um, I don't know how many of you guys saw it, but there's a movie called Butcher's Crossing, and it came out. Um, I went to go go see it when I was in the theater. It's a, it's a Nicolas Cage movie. Joe P., I know you're my Nicolas Cage uh, friend over there. By the way, I didn't see a comment from you, Joe, but we're going to mention you anyway. Um, but uh, Butcher's Crossing. There's another actor in it, and I thought I knew him from other movies, but I guess I really didn't. But there's another actor that's in it. I can't, for life of me, don't know his name. But anyway, if you watch the movie, you'll see what I mean. He is a total Jack Nicholson in it. He is a total Jack Nicholson in it. <laughs> it makes me laugh because when you're watching, you're like, that. that's like a Jack Nicholson type in character. But no, I mean... You know, who doesn't like Jack Nicholson? The over-the-top, you know, sometimes uh, absolute crazy. His, his movies are wild. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, you, you know, some of the early stuff, too. Like, I mean, of course, The Shining was just like, just, that is just total, just like, con super ultra-concentrated Jack Nicholson. <laughs> um, but some of the ones that I guess, uh, to me, fly under the radar that you don't really know about... Or haven't really checked out watch like movies like the pledge which is fairly new well i guess i consider new i was, i think it was like early 2000s um uh that movie i, I remember re i remember just renting that uh, that is a, a movie directed by sean penn i believe and that's a crazy movie to think about the what what's going on in that movie 
Um, he plays like a retired cop that just can't let a, a murder case go. And he's just obsessed and crazy. Enough said, right, Jack Nicholson. Um, some of the other ones, like, I mean, you look back and think, like, too, like, I think this was, I think it, it was the 80s. I'm, I mean, I'm almost certain it was the 80s. Um, like, uh, the movie he did with Jessica Lange, um, Postman Always Rings Twice. I mean, that movie was practically X-rated. I mean, that, that was another just crazy, um, pretty risky movie. Um, the other ones that I think fly under the thing, uh, I'm not much uh, for different types of westerns. I don't watch a whole lot of westerns uh, much, but Missouri Breaks, Missouri Breaks is that's a really weird movie. That's a good one. That's a that's actually a decent western. Um, that's also got Marlon Brando in it, and Marlon Brando is completely weird in it just strange i mean as if as if you mentioning him and being strange is not enough that's definitely a weird movie if you haven't seen that that's got jack nicholson and, and marlon brando in it that's a strange movie um the other one that he did later after that a couple of years or so later after that it did a west another western called um going south uh with uh what's her name mary steenberg or something i forget how to pronounce it he may have even had a fling with her going on but that's another one that's uh, kind of around the same time frame um that he did but you know he did some really those are decent movies uh um the missouri breaks is not you know he's not whacked out jack nicholson he's actually pretty you know he's he's doing it you know shows you that yeah he's uh he he does some pretty good movies um the other one is the crossing guard I don't know uh, how many people have seen that one. It's another film I th I believe is directed by uh, Sean Penn. Crossing Guard's good. Um, that he did, you know, really a good job in it. And of course, um, I think uh, what a good way that I th I feel he kind of closed his career um, because he kind of retired around that time period. He wasn't around much longer because uh, I think his final absolute final film was in two thousand ten, but. The Departed, directed by Martin Scorsese. Um, that's a good one. That that definitely um, got to say that. But yeah, um, Jack Nicholson, he's one of my favorites. I, I definitely enjoy a lot of his uh, a lot of his movies. So, speaking of movies and whatnot, um, I brought out some physical media stuff that I may or may not have shown. This was one I've had for a, a little while now. Um, this is cool because. This this whole box set, uh, it's interesting. And this is the the box set for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one from the seventies. In fact, here all the information is on the bottom. This has got four feature commentaries, uh, collector's edition bonus discs. Um, it's got all kinds of stuff. Look at the shocking truth of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, one called Flesh Wounds. Look at that. Seven stories of the saw. Um, if you guys know me, uh, I'm a really big horror movie fanatic. Uh, I love the horror stuff, especially all the old stuff. So, um, we're talking 60s, 70s, 80s horror. Some of the early 90s stuff is pretty good. Um, but I'm a really big sucker for all that because that's all the stuff I grew up with. And um, this is definitely one of those movies. We're renting it on, v on VHS. Um, from Blockbuster and just not knowing what to expect and just thinking like is this going to be so intense that I'm not going to be able to handle it or whatnot and I just love that because back then you know you saw these movies you weren't sure it was almost like oh man do I really dare to rent this tape and go home and plug it into that VCR and it was something magical about sticking that tape into the VCR watching it go down and drop down and then start the whirling sound here you go <laughs> but anyway here it is um, this is really cool it's a it's the uh, the truck the in the end of the movie uh, if you've seen the movie this is the truck that's driven by the truck driver and actually pulls out and then, whoops um, that's the truck and inside is all the goodies you got the movie the limited edition 
of it so it's kind of neat it's got its own little uh, thing going on there and it is just loaded with you know discs you got one two three four five five discs in this one you got a um, poster this is cool I actually have not brought this out for a while so let's check this poster out look at that all right the uh, 40th anniversary um, poster here you got the, the van the dead armadillo which I heard if I'm not mistaken I heard the dead armadillo scene was a like a um, I think they found the, the it was a taxidermy armadillo I think they found it and they just put it in the film uh, for those that are freaking out thinking that was um, something I think that's what I remember reading um, other interesting things in here what else did they put in here they put this in here um, this is just an apron, if I remember right. Yeah, this is an apron. It's a blood splattered apron. No joke. That I don't know. I, I think, honestly, I gotta say, if I was gonna critique this thing a little bit, it would be like, this almost feels like they were kind of like, what else do we put in there? So somebody just came up with this and threw it in there, which I think is kind of a lame thing. Uh, you know thing because that's it that's literally all that's in this thing i don't remember how much this thing cost um i don't think it was that much but the really the only cool redeeming thing about the whole bit is the the truck because yeah seriously there's nothing else in here this cardboard insert thing is just all the the dvd thing but that's it i mean that, there's nothing else in this but it's kind of cool you like physical media it displays pretty awesome uh, on the um, you know if you if you got a horror um, setup you know movie collection like I do it just definitely displays pretty cool but uh, yeah I don't know if that's around anymore I don't know if they still make that thing but it's kind of neat um, I don't know if that that DVD set is how limited it is or if you can even just get that alone um, and you don't want the truck box thing so all right the other thing I do is I collect um, I collect vinyl I really got um, pretty into vinyl and some of my music tastes I guess is all over the place in some ways but this is the um, big fan of Metallica Metallica Lars Ulrich is who got me into playing drums to begin with I know some people were like didn't know I actually played an instrument I wouldn't I think playing an instrument would be kind of being self aggrandizing <laughs> I would best describe myself as a really bad terrible ripoff of Lars Ulrich uh, is my style um, this is cool because this is Metallica and the San Francisco Symphony part two I have not put, you know, I have not bought the first one yet. Uh, the, I don't think I do. I don't think I have it. I don't know. I may have it. I, I'm not sure. I, I buy. I used to buy a lot of these all the time. Now I'm kind of slowing down. But this is cool because it's got all of the stuff. And I tell you, vinyl is just the coolest thing. If you've not experienced it, it, it is something else. But look at this thing. There is one, two three four four of them in there and it's cool because they did you know you don't get this you know really cool um just artwork and everything with uh cds even though i'm you know obviously i love cds and everything um that's where i started um my actually my first uh music thing i bought was a cassette tape bob Seger and the silver bullet band um, but look at this you got all this stuff in there and then you got the you know the records themselves in there That's really cool if you've not uh, gotten to check these out and heard the music on vinyl It is absolutely Amazing, but this is one of those sets that I bought when it when I heard they, they came out with this so And uh, you know you want to take care of it. I take care of them I'll try my best to uh, you know not mess them up or anything like that but this is cool because they they did this originally in the 90s and then they went back and I guess they did it again so um, with everybody and 
they they play a lot of their um, their hits on here, but then they changed it up a little bit. I can tell you they they definitely changed it up because it's not the same set list for say as the original one, but there are a lot of them are, are there, but they did uh, change it up a bit. Obviously, they got some of their new hits on there as well. The other one is um, that I really actually am glad they re-released it, or either that or I just got lucky and found a, a, a copy of it. Um, I'm a big fan of Social Distortion. I like these guys. They're, they're great. Um, reminds me of being in high school um, all over again, uh, stuff like this, one of my favorites. Sex, Love, and Rock and Roll. This album is just awesome. I think this is one of their more... To me, very underrated uh, albums next to Hard Times and Nursery Rhymes, which was their last one. I don't think they've done anything since. Um, everybody knows, if you're a big Social D fan, uh, everybody knows their maiden ones, like uh, the self-entitled one. But I really think this is their best record. It's got Reacher of the Sky, which is a great uh, song, uh, Nickels and Dimes. Uh, Angels Wings, uh, Winners and Losers. It's got just tons and tons of uh, songs that I really like. And the um, the artwork is cool. It's got the pictures of them all, you know, and you know, I just love it. These guys are just so old school, old school sound and everything. I love this type of uh, genre of music. Great stuff. Last but not least is another band that uh, I'm really a big fan of. It is a band called Bad Religion. Bad Religion is an alternative punk rock band that started in the late 70s, I believe. Uh, they went through, they dominated the 80s. Um, they, they have a lot of um, a really distinctive sound. The singer is really distinctive. Uh, they're still going to this day. They're still going. I got the um, awesome... Uh, pleasure and privilege to go see these guys in Oahu um, back in 2009 uh, at the uh, Pipeline Cafe Theater place um, that's I believe no longer existing and I got to go backstage I did pay for a little bit and meet some of the guys um, some of them were really cool some of them weren't um, that kind of goes back to don't meet your heroes but anyway no nah, but it wasn't like a, a, a situation where it soured it so much where I, I I, I don't like them anymore. But uh, anyway, um, another cool one. Uh, this record here is called No Substance. This is one of my favorites because I really think that uh, it's got a lot of uh, really cool songs on it that, that are really kind of hidden gems. Again, they got their own sound. The, the singer definitely has a very distinctive voice. And this is definitely one of those records that I think uh, I listen to quite a bit. And it uh, and wore that CD out, and this is cool because I got the uh, vinyl of it, and still been collecting some of their stuff like that. So, they, um, you know, obviously with their name and the title and everything like that, you may or may not like it. Um, they're kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, with the religious kind of, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm pretty neutral. Um, I don't look at it for as you know, it being the anti-religious or anything, I wouldn't consider. I wouldn't definitely not consider this band like a Satan, Satan worshiping band or something like that. Uh, they're far from that. It's not that. It's just I think they're they're um, more product of when they were growing up and everything like that. So, but anyway, enough of that. Uh, I just enjoy the music. Same with films. Um, I enjoy them for entertainment purposes and value. It's just great. So anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed this week's show. We're going to go ahead and uh, end it right now. Uh, before we do, I just wanted to show you these are the uh, uh, quick ones that I uh, came up with here. These are cool because I like these. I've been liking these. Um, they're full-size 1911 um grips but they have the flat bottom to them they're actually usually put on 1911s that have the uh, magwell but they kind of got popular with uh, other companies i've seen put uh, these straight up on on theirs but of course i did the uh that marbled um brown and orange look that i think is really cool from the retro days so this is kind of a, a, a hat tip to that so i don't know i thought they were kind of neat i've been doing some different finish work on them to change it up a little bit 
Um, not that I'm making a whole lot of them. I just kind of whipped that up and uh, thought I wanted to see how they would turn out. I thought they turned out pretty cool. So, um, like it. It's kind of like that, you know, old school throwback. So, anyway, um, again, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, that is, what is that? That is 29 minutes and 50 seconds that you will never, ever get back.